If you are in a relationship right now, let me turn you on to the Ritual app. You are going to schedule your one-on-one session live with your clinician every week. I happen to be one of them. And in preparation for these sessions, you and your partner every single week, you're going to look at your video content that is curated for you and your partner. And you're going to learn the relationship skills that you need to really keep your relationship running smoothly and to keep both of you strong and emotionally healthy. And you're going to meet with your clinician afterwards. You're going to take the assessment. You're going to do your journal prompts and take the assessment so your clinician can find out how you're doing and how things are going in your relationship and the areas that you may need to get stronger in. But Ritual is an absolutely amazing app. It's going to help keep your relationship on track. It's going to give you that curated time with your partner every week to work on your relationship. And so I want you to check out the link at the bottom of this video and click on it and you will get 20% off of the Ritual app. You also have the opportunity to message your clinician in between sessions. So you can also do that. Um, But it is an absolutely amazing tool, a great modern day tool for couples to keep their relationship strong and healthy. So check out the Ritual app today and don't forget to use my link to get 20% off of your first month of Ritual. And if you'd like to work with me, please let them know you're interested in working with Anita Stoudmeyer. Good afternoon. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to put this phone. Do I want to put this phone up here? All right, y'all. I'm going to try to put it up here. But y'all, my phone, I was given a really good tip. And it was saying, a gentleman was saying I had too many apps running on my phone. I'm going to go in and try to get rid of some of the apps running on my phone. He said that might be why it's overheating. Okay, so I'm headed downtown. I have an event that I have to just show my face at. And when I tell y'all, it's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. (laughs) Okay. Look, I already texted her that I'm on my way. I said, you got 30 minutes. You got 30 minutes and Anita is out. (laughs) Uh, But it's a business owner here locally. She's doing a three-year anniversary of her business. And I'm super proud. I'm super proud of her. So I have to show my face. I have to support and show my face. And then I'm out. But I just wanted to jump on and I wanted to make this video quickly. This video was actually requested by a gentleman on my YouTube platform. And he wanted some tips on abstaining from sex. How do you properly abstain? (laughs) How do you successfully abstain? Okay. Um, so this video is a requested video because apparently a lot of people don't know the very basic mechanics of when you decide. And remember, abstinence is a decision. It is something that you decide to do. And there are many wonderful, good reasons for you to do it. So you are going to decide that you are going to abstain from sex. And I also want you to decide why you're doing that. I think that's super important. We need to know the why behind why we're doing what we're doing. So once you make that decision, I want you to write out, okay, I today's date and I am making the decision to abstain from sex for the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. I want you to actually give yourself a timeline, okay? Because I believe we can do anything as long as we know how long it's going to last. Sometimes when you do this, you pleasantly surprise yourself. You may go much longer than you intended to go, okay? But for now, it's a journey that some people have decided they want to go on. So I want you to give yourself a timeline. So you write that out, that as of today's date, I commit to abstaining from sex or sexual activity 
for the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, okay? And you sign it. You make an agreement with yourself. You make an, a commitment with yourself, right? One of the things I know about people who struggle with commitments and they struggle with um, keeping their word is they don't keep their word to themselves. And that's why they have a hard time keeping their word to others. So they don't know how to commit to themselves. They don't know how to keep their word to themselves. So that's what I often tell people. Practice keeping your word to yourself and you'll do better keeping your word to other people. Okay. What's up next? Okay. So next you are going to mute or block all of the, the sneaky links, all of the people that you know you are weak around, okay? If these are people you would normally, like your little sneaky links, your little, you know, ace in the hole people, that if you got, if you got the feeling away, right, all of the exes or all of the little friends with benefits or whatever they are, you're going to mute or block them for the time being. You're going to make it so that they can't reach out to you or you're not going to know when they reach out to you because those people are your temptation. OK, uh, so go ahead and mute them, block them. <laughs> like if those are the people you know to go back to to get you some, you're going to mute them and block them for the time being. And that way you cannot be tempted. The next thing I want you to do, so here's what's interesting about abstaining. You can date, you can go out with people, but here's something you ain't gonna do. You are not gonna, okay, he said easier said than done. Well, you committed, okay? Here's the next thing you are gonna do. You're allowed to date, you're allowed to go out with people, you're allowed to have fun. I do all the fun things. Here's what I don't do. I don't go over nobody's house and they don't go over mine. That is that is completely off the table. You're not going over anybody's house and then you're not letting them come over to your house. You're going to take this back to 1885. What does that mean? That means that you're going to go out as a group. <laughs> you're going to have a chaperone and you're going to go out as a group of people. Okay. Some of y'all can go out one-on-one. -on -one, you're just not going to anybody's house. So you're not going to anybody's house. You're not going in anybody's car. You're going to drive yourself there, and they're going to drive themselves there, and then you're going to go home. That's it. That's the date. You're going to meet up at Top Go. You're going to meet at the bowling alley. You're going to meet at the restaurant, and then you're going to take your behind home. Okay? So that's a big part. That, that plays a big part in people struggling or being tempted with abstaining. See, y'all get behind closed doors. You get on people's couches, okay? That, that, that'll do it every time. You get behind closed doors and you get on people's couches and you take your shoes off. And before you know it, you done fell into some, <clears throat> okay? So, no. No more going over people's houses. No more letting them go over your house, okay? That's, that's a skill that at some point you can, right? This is for people who are intermediate and advanced. Once you get to intermediate and advanced, sure, you gonna enter a relationship with someone and they'll be coming over your house and you be coming over their house, but you won't be getting but so comfortable. That's for immediate and advanced people only. Or you're going to invite them over when you having friends over. Okay? So when I have my game nights, when I have friends over, when I have dinner parties, yeah, I don't have a problem inviting a man to my house because there's a whole bunch of other people in here too. Now, I don't need him to stay back and clean up. I don't need him to, you know, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. You, you can leave with everybody else because you stay back and clean up. And you be in the, uh, what's it, uh, the boomerang situation. That's how the boomerang situation popped off between Eddie Murphy and Halle Berry. That whole staying back, <coughs> staying back and cleaning up and sitting on the couch and getting tired and falling asleep and waking up kissing. And then before you know it, it's on and popping. No. Mm -mm. There will be none of that. 
So that to me is abstinence 101. Stop going over people's houses. Stop letting them come over to your house. Okay? Stuff pops off when you do that. Y'all get too comfortable. And look, that's why I keep telling these women, the fact that it's a whole thing now where these men want to cook for you. Oh, come over to the house. I'll cook for you. No, thank you. I don't care if you a five-star Michelin chef. No. Don't go over to no man's house. Don't let him cook you nothing. No. That's a great big no. You are inviting some foolishness if you do that. Okay? All right. So you're going to take it all the way back. You're going to go on some group dates. You're going to have a chaperone there. Okay? If you... If you uh intermediate to advanced, you can go out, just the two of you, but you're going to meet out. He's not picking you up. You're not riding together. You're just meeting out, having fun, going home. That's how those dates should go. Okay? Uh, once you are in a relationship, now let's go to intermediate and advanced. Because once you're in a relationship, and let's say you want to abstain until you're married. Okay, now it's getting real tricky. You're in a relationship with this man. You're in a relationship with this woman, and y'all are feeling each other, and y'all are courting for marriage. Okay, again, the same rules apply, but we gotta we gotta bump it up a notch because now, uh oh, you know we 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 didn't kind of you know we feeling each other. We we've been consistent, and we've been showing up, and we've been connecting emotionally. So naturally, we gonna want to connect physically. But again, you have to have good strong boundaries in place. If you travel, you stay in separate rooms. Okay? You stay in separate rooms if you travel. And some of y'all can't even travel together. You can't travel and be in separate rooms because that don't mean nothing. So the truth is you have to know yourself. You have to know your desire. Right? I know myself. I know my, my level of desire. I know what will do it for me and what won't. I can't do a whole lot of, you know, intimate dinners. I can't do a whole lot of, you know, hugging up on and all. I can't do a whole lot of that. Okay. I can do a little kissing. I can do a little touching. But I put a limit on it. Like, I can't do a whole lot of it because, yeah, you have to know yourself when you abstain. Okay. You just got to know what your limits are. And here's the thing. I've gotten into trouble. Now, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I've gotten into trouble because even though I know my limits, like sometimes I'll have friends of mine that are holding me accountable. They're like, Anita, <laughs> like, Anita, now you know good and well that if you go here, if you do this, let me, let me bring up this other point. Alcohol. Some of y'all can't drink no alcohol. Can we be honest? Some of y'all can't drink no alcohol. Some of y'all are horny as I don't know what when you drink. So I would say abstain from drinking alcohol. You need to abstain from drinking alcohol. Now, I don't drink alcohol like that anymore, so that's not a worry I have. It's very rare that I have alcohol. Very rare, if at all. So I don't have that worry. But back in the day when I would drink alcohol, I know that about myself. That if I have a couple of drinks... That's going to loosen me right up. <laughs> so that's going to make me want to do some things. So some of y'all need to abstain from having alcohol. Alcohol has got you in a lot of trouble. And for those of you that smoke weed or use edibles, same thing, the same thing applies. You may have to cut that out because if that puts you in a super relaxed state, no, baby, you can't have that. You got to leave that alone. Okay. So that's something that I have to talk with people about. Cut out the drinking. And too many women that I have coached, oh, well, I felt nervous on the first date, and so I had a couple of drinks. No. No, that's how you got into trouble. Don't drink anything. Don't take anything. Be of sober mind. Because some of y'all fall into temptation when you drink it. Okay. But you have to know yourself. Once you get in that intermediate to advanced stage, you just have to know yourself. You have to put chaperones in place. You have to have accountability partners. You have to have, you got, look, you got to have a sponsor like you in AA. Okay. I have had sponsors, y'all, where I will call or text them when I'm out, like 
girl, it's, I mean, he looks so good. He smells so good and this and that. Girl, just get out of there. <laughs> just get out of there. Just run out of there. Hey, I have, I have sponsors. I have sponsors helping me when the temptation is really high. Like, no, nah, I got to leave. I got to go. Okay. But you have to have people holding you accountable. You have to have people, you know, t talking sense into you. Because it's just so much temptation out here. It's everywhere. You can't go nowhere without seeing no TNA. It's everywhere. And then let's add the layer of pornography, which I believe is more of a man thing. There's some women out here addicted to pornography. But you add pornography to that and it's like, dang, I just, I can't do it. But everything is sexualized. Everything is sexualized now. You can't go nowhere or do nothing without seeing some TNA. It's just everywhere. But put those boundaries in place. Put the people you need to put in place. Have chaperones. Have accountability partners. Have, you know, sponsors helping you. And then guard your eyes. That's another one. Guard your eyes. If there's certain music you, you can't listen to, don't listen to it. That used to get me caught up too. There was certain music, certain songs that I could just listen to that song and be ready to get some. Like, you know what? <laughs> I'm ready to get some. Okay? I'm ready to get some. Uh, so you got to avoid certain music. You got to avoid alcohol. You got to avoid edibles and, and weed. Okay? Certain movies. To this day, y'all, I can't watch uh, Purple Rain. <laughs> can't watch Purple Rain. Can't watch the scene in Purple Rain. That'll get me riled up. Okay? You got to be honest with yourself. That there's certain things that will get you in a mindset, get you in a mind space where you want to get some. But it's certain movies. Purple Rain It's another one. It's a couple of movies that'll just get me all riled up. So I just don't do it. I don't do it. I say, nope. I oh, the other one is Love Jones. Y'all, I can't watch Love Jones. I can't watch Love Jones, y'all, because that'll get me in the mood. So, nope. Nope. Can't do it. Okay? So, there's certain things you're going to have to guard your eyes against. You're going to have to guard your eyes. You're going to have to guard your ears. Right? If you know that a strong man, you know, wrapping his arms around you is going to make you feel a way, just wave. All right, baby. All right. Have a good night. <laughs> like, like, seriously, it's some women out there that they can't even take a strong hug by a man. That'll put them in the mood. But just wave at them. No, nah, I can't do that, baby. I Just, all right, have a good night. Just wave at them. Okay? You know yourself. You know what it's going to take to get you there. You know what's going to turn you on to the point of no return. Okay? So, uh-uh. But these are all, you got to put all these boundaries in place. And then, if you're, if you're a spiritual person, you know, as a Christian person, this is, this is what helps me every single time. When I'm listening to the word, when I'm reading the word, when I'm studying every day, when I'm listening to sermons, right? When I'm listening to things of a spiritual nature, when I'm doing that every day, the Holy Spirit is invited into my life. It's easy for me to abstain. Very easy. Even when I'm going on dates, even when I'm, you know, around men and all of that, when I have that word going, when I have, you know, the sermons and I'm looking at Joyce Meyer and I'm looking at Joel Osteen and I'm looking at, you know, all the people that I listen to pretty much everybody. I'm looking at all these people, Miles Monroe. I'm just looking at all these people and their sermons and I'm, hearing the word and reading the word when I'm studying, it's easy for me to abstain because it's almost like it's this protective cloak. God puts me under this protective cloak, this protective bubble. And it's like, yeah, my flesh is crucified. I don't feel like I don't feel, I don't feel that at all. But when you get away from that stuff, when you're not going to a church, when you're not being fed spiritually, when you're not reading the Bible, when you're not looking at any, it's easy. It is so easy for your flesh to succumb. 
Because if I'm being honest, can I be honest? Oh, is that the, oh, that's the hive. That's not where I'm going. Can I be honest? You are not under God's protection. You out here trying to abstain in your own strength. That's the problem. You just, you just, you so prideful. You so full of pride that you're like, oh, I can, you know, I can abstain. I can abstain. No, baby, you're going to need Jesus. <laughs> you're going to need God's Holy Spirit to truly abstain. And that's what's him and a lot of y'all up. You letting your pride, you letting your pride make you believe that you can do it in your own strength. You can't. You can't. Can we be real? You can't. It's too much temptation out here, especially now. Especially now. You can't abstain. So I have to have the Lord. I have to have him in my ear all the time. I have to be reading. I have to be praying, you know, all the time because it's everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere. All right, let me look and see where I'm going. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm in the city, and the city got all these potholes, and my phone is jiggling around. I'm in the city now, and it it just, the street is horrible. 12, let me see if I can find where I'm going. But uh, these are just some of the tips that I'm sharing. Let me, I'm going to pull over in a minute and look at some of your comments. (laughs) <laughs> he said, good squeeze and clothes just fall off. Yeah, let me tell you. Yeah, be mindful. There are some, there are some people that I don't let them hug me. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. All right, baby. All right, yeah, have a great evening. <laughs> I'm just being honest. So you know yourself, right? So some of this is you just have to, okay, I'm way off. You just have to know yourself. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to know yourself and stop fooling yourself. Stop letting pride. okay? and and this this prideful spirit make you think you stronger than you are. You better than you are. Be honest with yourself. okay? hold on a second. I'm going to pull over in a minute because I don't know where I'm going. Okay, because, oh, they got a new chicken spot. Okay, I got to check that out. All right. I, I got to go up further. I'm way, I'm way too far away. Okay, so those are some of my tips. That's what keeps me on the straight and narrow. Now, we're going to get a little spicy. You ready? We're going to get a little spicy. Some people would say, and people have asked me my opinion about this. You know, people have asked me my opinion, and I'm actually not going to share my personal, personal opinion on this live. Um, But people have asked me my opinion about masturbation. I have discussed my thoughts in one-on-one sessions, okay? So those of you who've had a one-on-one session, I have discussed my thoughts about that in in a one-on-one session, in a personal setting. Uh, Some people believe that masturbation is a sin. Some people believe that it feeds your lust, right? That it's only making it worse. That masturbation feeds the lust monster. Now, some people believe that it is not a sin. And some people believe that it can help temper the lust within you. So I don't know which side of the fence that y'all land on. Okay? There are, to my knowledge, there are two scriptures in the Bible that reference masturbation. So I've I've heard both sides of this argument. And again, I'm not going to speak on it publicly, but I've I've heard both sides of this argument. Right. Um, And I personally believe that anything you're doing. That is becoming an addiction. So anything you're doing in excess, anything you're doing that you can't not do or can't stop doing, right? That's problematic is problematic. Okay. But I've heard both sides of this coin. Some people who say it helps, you know, it helps, it helps to keep me from, you know, it helps to keep me in abstinence. And then I've heard other people say, no, it's only feeding the lust of the flesh. So, dang it, I think I passed it. Okay, let me go on the other side. Uh, So, 
I'm going to leave that right there. Okay, I'm going to leave that right there. And each person, I want you to, to figure that out for yourself. I want you to re research that for yourself. All right, let me see what y'all's comments are. Because I've had a couple people comment. And because I'm driving. And I don't know where I'm going. Okay. All right, there we go. Do everything out in the public area. No ride share. Go straight home. Yep. Not the couch. Yep. That's where y'all be getting. That's where y'all be falling off. It's going over people's houses and sitting on the couch. That's it. It's a done deal. It's also best to date someone who wants to be abstinent as well. I agree. Both parties have to be on the same page. Yes. Yes, that is. That's definitely very helpful. Uh, oldest trick in the book. <laughs> Lord. Amen. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's rough out here. What up with the men asking women to come over their house when they first meet you? Yeah, it's just downright weird. It's just downright weird, y'all. It's just, yeah. It's, and look, I'm not going to say it. So some women will go as far as to say it's disrespectful. It's this, it's that. No, I'm not going to go that far. I'm just going to say it. I think it's weird. And the answer is no. <laughs> like, like, you don't need to. If I'm being honest, you don't need to get all up in arms about it. It's just weird and the answer is no. Like that's it. That's all you need to that's all you need to do. The answer is no. And it's weird. She said that's happened to me twice. I need you to be my sponsor, Miss Anita. <laughs> okay. Uh the number one problem is pornography. Guard your eyes and music. Yep. 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 Okay, he says, I agree when you are surrounded by the word through listening or reading or meditation, it's much easier to ignore temptation. It really is. Like, it's not a thought in my head when, you know, I'm in my word and I'm listening and I'm looking. It's not a thought in my head. Not a thought in my head. I go to bed uh, straight away and just have the best sleep ever. Okay, people getting squeezed and clothes just fall off. Yep. Yep. And, and and like I said, that's a lot of women, because for a woman, it's the 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 strong arms, the strong hands, it's the smell of a man, it's feeling his beard against their cheek, you know, all those little things turn women on. I think you've confirmed you were okay with that back in the day. Yeah, I like I said, I am not gonna speak publicly about it because people just get all up in arms. Um. I'm a, I, let's put it this way. This is what I'm going to say about it. And then I'm going to let it lie. I am an advocate of people knowing their body. I am a huge advocate on you need to know and explore your body. You need to know what you like and what you don't like, what feels good and what don't feel good. There, there needs to be some sort of responsibility and autonomy over your body. I don't like the idea of me relying solely on my husband to know my body or know what I like or what I don't like. I want to be able to know that for myself. I want to be able to explore that for myself. Okay. That's what I'm going to say about that. I just, I just don't believe in this whole, you know, Oh, my husband is the only person that touches me and knows me and this and that. No, I can do that for myself. <laughs> I can, I can figure that out for myself. Right. And I should have some knowledge of my body. I think that's like kind of odd that I wouldn't have any knowledge of my body. So that's why I'm going to leave that. But those are my thoughts that um, I think also having a purpose. I think also having a, a rich and full life. Like when you are bored, that's when y'all fall into temptation. When you are bored, when you ain't got nothing to do, when you don't have no purpose, when you don't, when life don't have no meaning, yeah, you get bored and you start doing things that you should not be doing. Yeah. So that plays a big part too. You need to have a rich, full life. You need to have things going on in your life. You need to be about something other than getting laid all the time. There are people out here that literally don't, they have no purpose. They have no meaning. They're not on any sort of goals or dreams or journey or anything all they do is get laid all they think about is getting laid like there are other things to think about in this world in life okay so please stay busy the old folks back in the day used to say an idle mind is the devil's workshop 
And that is the truth. Yeah, he said, idleness creates a world of obstacles. Exactly. Do something with yourself. Okay? But I'm not going to sit here and tell y'all it's super easy. I'm going to tell you it's easy for me because I already made it up in my mind that it would be. I don't ever say anything is hard because that is setting me up for failure. That is setting me up for it being hard. I always say stuff is easy. I'm about to do this and that, and it's going to be easy. That's what I tell myself. Okay, it's going to be easy. If, and with God, all things are possible, and I'm going to do this. I don't ever say, oh, it's going to be so hard. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm setting myself up for failure. No, it's going to be easy. I'm going I'm to put my mind to do this. I'm going to say it. I'm going to share it with somebody to hold me accountable, and then I'm going to do it. And there you have it. That's how I've gotten 98% of the stuff in my life. I make up my mind that it's possible and then I do it. So this is no different. It sucks. Does it suck? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. It, you know, it is what it is. But you know what? I believe we were put here to do hard things. I, will, I believe we were put here to discipline ourselves and crucify our flesh. I believe that's where all goodness comes from we need to know how to crucify our flesh we need to know how to do hard things life requires it we need to know how to discipline ourselves and do hard things so this idea of men can't do it you know men were built to spread seed and men were built to procreate and they not meant to be monogamous and they got to go out here and screw everything walking that is a very base, very uh, just fleshly based ideology. That is a very, uh, what's the word? I'm looking for the word, y'all. But it's like, to me, it's all but saying you're not made in the image of God. That you're not, it's, it's just so, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I just, I don't believe that. I just don't believe that. I believe that we can do anything. We can do anything, be anything, and have anything. And it, to me, it's a limiting belief. It's a limiting belief to say that a man cannot discipline his flesh, that a man cannot be in a long-term monogamous marriage. That That's such a limiting belief. And guess what? As long as you say it, that's going to be your reality. Because that's how limiting beliefs work. As soon as you tell me what you can't do, you can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. So that's it. But this idea that, oh, you know, it's just not, and we like animals and animals got, okay, so now you an animal? Like you are just degrading yourself at every turn. You just degrading yourself at every turn. I ain't got a mind. I ain't got intellect. I don't have reasoning. I don't have, and then this, this is what I talk about when I talk about the spirit of confusion. Can I just, let me share this real quick, and then I'm going to find where I'm supposed to be. The spirit of confusion says, it's like men are a ball of contradictions, right? One minute, they telling me monogamy is not natural, okay? It's not natural. It's, I got all this sperm in me because I got to impregnate all these women. Then the next minute, they telling me that they created the whole world and you know, women should be glad about that because we created the whole world and how smart they are and this and that. <laughs> then the next minute, they telling me, well, it's like lions and it's like apes and gorillas. and it. So next minute, you an animal. Then the next minute, they telling me, well, we have logic. We don't rely on feelings. We don't rely on emotions. We are logical, you know. <laughs> then the next minute, it's like, which is it? <laughs> which is it? Okay, which is it? Because to me, an undisciplined man is an emotional man. But yet, you telling me that men are so full of logic and reasoning, and they just do it. They don't need to feel like doing it. They don't need to think it. They just do it. So, it don't make sense. I be confused. Y'all think women are full of contradictions. So are y'all. And then you got the Madonna whore complex. That says that on one hand, you want your woman to be like the Virgin Mary, okay? Y'all love talking about virgins. Y'all love talking about virgins. Then on the other hand, oh, 
she don't know how to suck no thing or she don't know how to drop it like this or she okay which is it <laughs> which is it she not experienced or you know she not a freak in the bedroom which is it make it make sense because it don't you want a virgin but you are not sexually satisfied because she ain't a freak like it don't make sense y'all okay that's all and, and life this is what this is what i'm gonna end with life is full of trade-offs it's full of trade-offs and i'm gonna bring the women into this conversation you ready so ladies it's unlikely that you're going to get a good providing man. It's unlikely that you're going to get a good providing man, treat you well, stable and secure, and he just going to blow your back out. He going to blow your back out. He going to be exciting. He going to, you know, have all these surprises and do all this and that. Like, you ain't getting everything. You do have to pick and choose. You understand that, right? All right? So that toxic Tyrone, and he fun, and he exciting, and he 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 got a big member, and he can throw it like this and do it like this, and he unpredictable, and I don't know where he at. I don't know when he coming over. Okay, you can have that. But when you have kids with him, you're not getting a good father. He ain't going to the parent teacher conference. <laughs> like, like y'all want everything. Y'all actually want everything. When life is full of trade-offs, you will have to decide. You won't get everything. Okay? So when I decide that I want a man with money or I want to look, and this was this was the decision I made all them years ago. I told myself, I want to stay at home with my children. I don't want to work. I want to be a stay-at-home wife and mother. But guess what? Guess who didn't see their husband very much? Guess who husband works 70 hours a week, 80 hours a week? There are trade-offs. That's how life works. You can't have it all, all the time. Okay? And for y'all gentlemen, yeah, she know how to suck that thing, or she don't know how to drop it like that. But guess what? You ain't the only man she done done it for. Make up your mind what it is you want, okay? Or look, she got a fat dump truck. She got some big old yitties. She fine, okay? Guess what? You ain't the only person that can see it. You ain't the only person that's noticing it. You can't have it both ways. You want a woman that's thick as all heck. And she look good. And then, okay, other men notice it too. And, and, and God help you if she dress a certain way. Now you really feel a way. Well, baby, why you gotta wear that? Why you, okay, well, again. You say that's what you like, but then you feel a way when other men notice it too. You can't have it both ways all the time. So I keep telling these men, y'all want to meet women in the strip club and then be upset when they act like strippers. <laughs> what sense does that make? Make it make sense. <laughs> like I said, it, it's insanity to me. At some point, I sat down. I said, okay, these are the things I must have. Right, look, let me give y'all let me give y'all a real life example. This is funny. Six months ago, I went out with a man, and I mean just the most lovely man, the most godly man. Lovely, godly. I really enjoyed the scriptures that he would send me and was just a lovely man, right? Was just an easygoing, calm, quiet, lovely man. And why I put on I put on some song, and I admit the song was a, a tad inappropriate, but I liked it. You know, I liked this particular song. I can't remember what it was. But I put on some song, and it was, you know, it, it, it was a little tad inappropriate. And he was like, Anita, why are you listening to this? And, and, and he, I'm thinking, look, 
I'm, I'm, I want to be in my car bumping this song, right? <laughs> like, I, I just want to bump this song, right? No, that is completely inappropriate. And, you know, we need to put, we need to watch, we need to look at, look at, uh, listen to gospel music only, or we need to watch certain types of things. And isn't it like he was super strict, super strict. And I was like, dang, I got to give up like all my music from the eighties and the nineties. The I can't, I mean, he was super strict. He was super ho holy roller. Y'all think I'm holy roller? No, nah, he out, he outdid me. He didn't go to no R-rated movies. It was some PG movies he didn't go to. Oh, no, that's going to show this. and it, I don't watch that. I can't look at this. I was like, okay, this might be a little too much. This is a little too much Holy Roller for me, right? So just know, if I had chose that man, if I chose that man, I was giving up Tupac. I was giving up Biggie. I was giving up Eric B. and Rakim. I was giving up Lil' Kim. I was giving up a whole lot of music that I, that I liked it every now and again. <laughs> like, listen to in my car, right? I was like, dang, I can't listen to my 80s, 90s rap. No, don't listen to that. Don't listen to it. Giving up my N.W.A. I wasn't going to listen to that because he was like, mm-mm. We're not listening to that. We're listening to yeah, gospel music only. Okay, that was the only me. He did not listen to secular music. He did not watch secular movies. And I was like, ooh, no. So there are trade-offs. There are trade-offs. Would I have gotten a great man? I'm certain I would have. I'm certain I would have. There are trade-offs in life, baby, with everything. And you need to decide what you're willing to give up and what you're not. And choose accordingly. That's it. That's life. Choose accordingly. Okay? So, that's all. But those are my tips. So, you can abstain. You're going to pick a timeline, especially if you're new to this. But when I tell you, your creativity is going to be top notch. You are going to have so much clarity. You are going to truly see people for who they really are. When you abstain, when you're not sleeping with them, oh, you can see all their little quirks. You can see all their little idiosyncrasies. I'll I, I be like, oh, yeah, I don't like, oh, look at that. Look at this. Look. Like, I can see it all. One thing about having sex or even kissing, it can blind you. It put blinders on you where you can't really see the true essence of a person. But when you're not having sex, when you're not kissing and touching and rubbing and all that other stuff, you can really see people for who they really are. You really get the true essence of a person. So that's why I tell people, if you fall in love with a person that you have not had sex with, there's something genuine about that. There's something real about that because you're not blinded by lust. You're not blinded by the limerence that you feel when all them hormones get involved, when all that hormone, you know, the oxytocin and the, the, the serotonin and all them cocktail, that cocktail get involved. That's not love. That's lust. OK, even kissing. There are chemicals that you release in your body from just kissing. Just mouths touching can fool you and make you think this person is better than they are. Rip that halo off their head. Right. Stop, stop kissing, stop sleeping with them and you're going to see. And look, can I be real? For those of you, you're going to get real irritated. Stop. If you dating somebody right now and having sex, stop sleeping with them for 30 days and see how irritated you get. That's the answer. That's your answer of do you really love that person? Do you really want them like that? Seriously, stop sleeping with them for 30 days. And if you feel that them breathing irritates you. You don't love that person. You ain't. You don't love that person. But that lust has fooled you. That lust has tricked you into thinking you love that person. But if the very sight of them chewing <laughs> like irritates you, baby, you have mm -mm, nope, nope. You have been fooled. Okay, you have been fooled. So nope. Nope. But it'll give so much clarity. You will finally see that person and who they really are. You'll get a whole lot of clarity. Whole lot of clarity. 
So those are my tips. I hope they were helpful. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate you. Please like this video. All right. I'm trying to grow the channel slowly but surely. And uh, it's funny because I've had some people who have grown their channel in a myriad of ways, whether they pay for subscribers or followers or whatever. Um, but I am actually trying to grow my YouTube organically. I've had so many people reach out to me. Oh, I can get you subscribers and I can get you followers and blah, 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 blah. I'm actually trying to do it the good old fashioned way. So please, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Okay, Alta says experienced it firsthand. <laughs> yeah, like I said, there are trade-offs in life, y'all. Y'all just got to figure out what it is you really want. And guess what? When you figure that out and you get it, just be happy with it, right? Don't spend days and weeks and months like regretting your decision or wondering if you made the right decision. Decide and live with it. That's what a lot of people need to learn how to do. Make a decision and live with it. Okay, don't go back and forth and don't, I woulda, coulda, shoulda. Just decide and live with it. That's it. All right, I got to go. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Have a great rest of your Saturday. We are getting ready to experience a storm, so I got to find out where I got to be so I can be in there because it's like black clouds everywhere. But have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for joining. And as always, stay open to love.